Okay, my wonderful friends, this is Brian Forrester's Paracas skull. They had a DNA test and so forth. However, I saw something here that I think possibly, just a guess, that it might have actually had horns. There seems to be one on each side that has this, this characteristic. It's got a spot in the center, which normally would be what we call a foramen, foramen. And then it has these little anchor spots around and, and that sort of situation. Now let me see. I think he shows the other side. Here goes. Greater than the previous skull I showed you. And the whole shape is much more... You see, that I think could have been a horn sticking out and, and I watched the other side. Now, something else I want you to see is that there's darkness on this side, which means that like the skin and so forth was basically almost preserved. The other side, I believe, was laying in the mud or the dirt Complex, because they bleach. You see how this is all bleached out? But look at this. This is what I, well, look at it. Hold on. Now, here we go. There's that same area again virtually exactly on the other side there's the bone foramen in the center you can see the little tags in here and it, then you got this big wide open white spot why why is that why is that there i think there was a horn sticking up here and when it was laying down this was basically off the dirt or or or, or it, it sort of broke it somehow but the the horn was down into the substrate f causing this sort of effect that's all i can uh, you know this is just a guess i'm just guessing but brian's got it in his hands he can look at this stuff very so carefully this person was born with an elongated skull i think they might have been born with horns too because boy that sure looks like a horn let me show you what a horn does look like and how it does bolt itself in and literally these are like bolted into the bone to, to support the horn Okay, what he, Brian might want to do is look in and see if this is a foramen that is in that center of that emplacement that I thought. Now, what a foramen is, is it has, well, I'll show you one. Now, he may not be able to see the foramen in his as well as I. Mine are really very, very good shape. But this is actually literally blood coming out of what is called a foramen. And what these do is they transfer blood and nerves to a next bone that's stuck up against it. Now this actually has the fiber and the scab underneath the blood and then here is where the the blood supplies are that were underneath the scab. So this is the foramen. That's where the blood supplies are. That's the red blood. That's the return vein blood and of course everything's missing now. But I would I would love to see if if Brian can take a look at that. Let me show you the bone. All right, this is a, a, the anatomy of a horn. They actually bolt themselves in right to the bone. And, of course, there's got to be some blood supply, so you're going to have a foramen probably in the center leading up into the growth pattern and so forth. Now, I, I don't think that's the ear. I think the ear, because your ear, our ears are, are, are basically somewhere along the same plane as the eyes. Now, these, there's a bunch of foramen all over the place because they feed blood into the tissues that surround. But on your skull, it's not, normally you don't see this. And these you don't see unless there's an emplacement. Normally, the, like, in tendons lock in in this type of a pattern of like balls lock in and they're anchors they're literally anchors now just a guess but i am going to be sort of following brian's work because he's he's the one showing things and asking questions he has things in his hands he, he goes out and tests things and does a lot of real serious work and um and I'm, I imagine he must be pretty frustrated by now for doing this for all these many years and having as little attention paid to it in the mainstream as should be. Because this is our true history. This is not some joke that somebody's just a tinfoil hat crazy guy. He's doing the kind of work that our institution should be doing. And I'm going to address that right now because I'm being attacked now for just being too re repetitive. Well, you, they're just hoping I'll go away, and that's not going to happen. Now, I have been 
I have been extremely repetitive, yes, because I have to be, because if I just make my statements and go away, that's the end of it. Be, they, they, they just want me to be quiet and want me to stay away. I am literally against all the teachers in the world, literally worldwide, all the schools, all the universities, all the academics, all the peer review people, versus me and Brian and a few other people. That And Brian and I are two of the most vocal that have stayed the course. You know, there's some other ones that have done it as well, but they don't have evidence like we have. I have bones, I have CAT scans, I have DNA. He does the same thing. Other people have a lot of statements to make and a lot of speculation, and they, they're they dismissed, and you can understand why, because they don't have physical evidence. We have physical evidence, they're still dismissed. This is not gonna stand. It will never stand. I will never go away. So if, if you're upset about seeing it over and over and over, well, I'm sorry for you <laughs> because I'm not going to stop. And sooner or later, when this is talked about as an alternative, uh, you know, look at what our history was and what we are finding and have geologists and the experts that claim to know everything take a look at it and, and dismiss it or or you know, look into it deeper, then I, I'm not going to stop. And I know Brian's not going to stop. He's He's got a, a museum and all kinds of stuff. He's got all his tour stuff going on. He is making a big difference in the world right now. And I'm trying to, to, to help as, as I can. So my, what my point being is that I have done, I was, I've shown my stuff a hundred times, literally, maybe a thousand times. How, where do you stop? If I stop, it's over. Because it's, that's the end of it. And it, and, it's, and it stops within a few days. I mean, seriously, it's over quick. They will, they, because nobody will respond. So that's not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. But my best alternative now is to work with other people's research and drop my own. I've, I've shown it so many times it's over. But I am looking into everybody else's research because they're finding things that they can't explain either and nobody else will talk about. So that's how I'm going to approach going forward. I'll still show a lot of my own stuff, my, my goose. <laughs> People are getting upset. They're, oh, you keep showing this stuff over and over. Well, let me tell you something. If I don't do it, nobody is going to do it because if you can, you know... I'm in a position where I don't really care what people say about me, and I don't have to make a living anymore, so I can go ahead and say whatever I want to say, and I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to stop, because I have the evidence. They do not. They will not. And, and the, the light research is just stunning, and, and Fermi Lab refuses to discuss it. Absolutely refuses. I don't, I'm not interested. I don't, don't show me this stuff. I don't want to see it. Fermi Lab, the people we pay to try to figure out our energy situations, refuse to engage in something that has absolutely stunning... Well, I'm going to show that now, too. We took pulse red laser. We accelerated it. Not allowed in science. Don't show us this because that doesn't happen. It's not allowed. Light is a particle. There it is right there. And the white part is what we've always seen is just the electron. That's dark matter. Don't show us. We don't want to see it. Fermi Lab, I don't know. Stay away from us. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. And then we split that. We split them and showed the muon, which is why they're so upset, because we showed the muon, they can't find it. There's the muons right there, there's the electron showers. And how can I say that? Well, here's all I can say, it, because that's exactly what CERN says. And here they are right there. There's the muon, there's the electron showers. These are the smallest particles that exist, and we created them right here and divided them in light. Not allowed by our scientists. I will never, ever stop. If they, this could get us free energy. Right there is free energy. We increase the potential energetic value of that particle 200 times. They know that. They agree with that. They just won't allow me to show it.